this primitive Japanese hand squirt in the unique museum of the London Fire Brigade, it's difficult to associate such a device with modern firefighting appliances. But it was in fact an 18th century ancestor, though a very feeble one. Hi everybody, Mark Moorhead of the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting. I have the honor to be the Curator of Education at the world's largest historical firefighting museum here in Phoenix, Arizona, where if you can't come into the museum, we'll bring the museum to you. And today we're in Gallery 1 and we have some pieces that we'd like to show you. You know, I always talk about how most of the pieces that we have here at the museum are from the United States. And again, it's not because we wouldn't love to have stuff from all over the world. We would, and we do, just most of us U.S., but the trouble is bringing it here. Getting, getting that stuff uh, from other countries to this country is a, an expensive and difficult proposition. But we do have a couple of pieces from other countries, and we're very proud of them. And we hear, today I want to show you a couple of pieces that we have from Japan. Uh, these are hand pumpers from the 1800s, probably from the second half of the 1800s. We're not absolutely sure of the dates on these. This one is a hand pumper that is very similar in some ways to the Western hand pumpers that we have here. Uh, this piece goes up and down, and you would have a big stout piece of bamboo that went through this hole that pumped up and down. Some of the works, some of the pump works here are missing. Uh, but this one was on the island of Honshu. It was, on, it was near Kyoto, uh, a, little visit, a little village called Kirioka and it belonged to a rice merchant uh, who, who lived there and was privately owned. Now, this piece was uh, kind of more municipal equipment. This was from a neighborhood in Osaka, and so was this, uh, probably from the 1880s, somewhere in that range. And this one is a really ingenious design. It's open-faced, and you would take pails. And you'll notice none of these pieces are wheeled. They would carry them on pallets, probably made out of bamboo, and they would carry them uh, up to the fire, and then you would feed this with pails of water, and you have your spout here, and it turns very uh, broadly. You can really aim this very precisely, and it pumps here, kind of like what the Roman firefighters would call a syringe, and you get a nice stream of water on that fire. Same with that one, that also has a pump. I'm not, I've never been exactly sure how this one works, but I think you stood it up in a tub, and you would pump it, and over on this side, you have a similar spout. Uh, so they're, these are very cleverly designed pieces. Now this one, you have a slightly different way of delivering the water. They used to actually use bamboo wands for the delivery system. And we have here a magazine illustration from the 1800s uh, that shows how it's done in Japan. And where the piece this guy, these guys are standing on in the picture is really quite similar to this one. But you would get, obviously, a very tight stream that way but it was a very powerful stream. So it shows how this technology evolved in similar ways in different parts of the world. And they had you know, very, very effective uh, firefighting where in an area where firefighting was very different. Fires were a real problem in Edo era Japan uh, because houses were made out of stuff that was really, really flammable. So they really had, uh, they really had to get it down to a science and they really did. Uh, and these are some specimens of that. Another Japanese artifact that we have here, it's beautifully preserved, is this uniform. Uh, and we have some also a couple of tools of the trade for a Japanese firefighter. We have this lantern, and we have these two kind of charmingly small pipe poles, which would be really handy and would, if you had one of those kind of lightweight paper frame walls that was burning, you pull it down, you can you know, tear open a, a, a house that way just as a, a Western firefighter might use an axe or a, or, a, or a larger pipe pool to do that here. As for this uniform, I have to say that I've always sort of hoped that this was a dress uniform because beautiful as it is, I, I have to admit I wouldn't want to get within 100 feet of a fire wearing this thing, but you'd look good. There's no doubt about that. We also have some Japanese art that's very beautiful and very evocative. Uh, it's 19th century prints. And some of the prints that we have here are famous ones in Japan by a great Japanese artist, Tsukiyoko Yoshitoshi. And by the way, if any of my pronunciation here is miserable, I do apologize. Uh, but they were from a series of prints that were from the later part of the 1800s uh, that were called the, the Hundred Aspects of the Moon. 
and among them there were all sorts of scenes of Edo life, which was what we would now call Tokyo. Uh, there were some scenes of firefighting, firefighter uniforms and firefighting activities and stuff like that. Fires were a big deal in Edo. Now the equipment we have is not from Edo or what we would now call Tokyo, uh, but I'm sure it was very similar in many ways. The activity was very similar, but in Edo fires were so common and often so bad that they, there was supposedly a saying that uh, fires and fights are the flowers of Edo. So uh, it was, being a firefighter was some job there like it is everywhere. The Edo era firefighters were known as Hikeshi and they had that same kind of bond that firefighters nowadays tend to have with each other. Uh, and their approach to firefighting was a, very much in some ways like the modern approach to wildland firefighting. Uh, because the dense urban areas in Japan were so terribly, terribly flammable, their major approach was they would just tear down houses around the burning area and create a deadline uh, for the fire not to be able to spread past. And it was sort of in the same way that you cut a fire line around uh, to, contain a, to contain a wildfire. Um, but so that was a very violent sort of approach, but probably actually the most effective one. Uh, they were also notoriously sort of violent men. They were known as brawlers and they were very clannish and they had uh, these very dramatic tattoos. In a lot of ways, modern Western firefighters could probably recognize a lot of the tradition and the bonding of uh, the Hikeshi from, from that era of Japan. Also in a lot of the prints, and there are a lot of prints depicting and traditional art depicting uh, the Hikeshi, you often see them carrying this sort of, it looks like a sort of a parasol with ribbons. I, probably there is a well-known explanation for what that was for wondering if maybe it had to do with uh, figuring the direction of the wind, something like that. Uh, but it's all, uh, it all looks very dramatic and very beautiful in, in this uh, Japanese 18th century, 19th century Japanese art. So this is all some of the international stuff that we proudly display here at the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting. I'm Mark Moorhead, Curator of Education. Bye-bye.